I'm Rachel Forsyth, and I'm here to guide a tour on what's going on this week with Vortex 2. We're going to take a tour inside the Truck Bay area, so follow me. Here we are in the Truck Bay. And as you can see, there's lots of stuff going on around here. Not really sure what all this is, but we're going to go try to find somebody who can, who can tell us what's going on. Oh, you, sir, you look like you can help us. <laughs> this is Sean. Tell us what's going on. What are, these, what are these big things on the top of cars and chairs on top of ladders? And Explain. These, these, uh, these mobile mesonets are getting ready to be used in a really big field project called Vortex 2. If you don't get out much, it's a big tornado research project. So we're just kind of throwing a whole bunch of stuff up on top of these racks and you know, trying to instrument them so that we can drive them into storms and get a whole bunch of information about the storms as we drive through it. Okay, now explain to us what this is because is there any way I can get one on my, on my car and does it clear parking garages? What's the, what's the height clearance on this? Give us, give us some more about this. Uh, this mobile mesonet rack actually measures pretty much everything that we need. Uh, up at the very top up there, we've got wind speed and wind direction from the wind anemometer. We've got a static pressure port up front for measuring air pressure. We've got several different types of temperature systems. We've got the J-tube that's kind of the S-shaped piece here, and then the long white tube on the back. GPS, solar radiation. We've even got a flux gate compass that'll give us vehicle heading when we're not moving, because GPSs don't really like it if you're not moving that much. <laughs> Um, got several communications antennas and things like that scattered all over the roof. So we've got a lot of stuff crammed onto this thing. Unfortunately, it's kind of a height restriction, you know, parking garages, things like that. The top clearance on that is about 11 feet, I think. So anything, you know, below 11 feet and you're going to start running into problems. We kind of jokingly call it the Sonic effect. When you've been out chasing a long, hard day, you're kind of hungry, you pull into Sonic, forget that you got this on the top of your car and there goes the rack. So we have had situations where people have run into power lines before, um, just totally destroys the rack, got to rebuild the whole thing. So there is a definite concern there. Um, as far as putting one of these on your car, it takes quite a bit of work to build one. This particular rack will only fit on a few cars because we need a very specific uh, roof width. So that's why we got these mobile mesonets because they happen to be a good sized vehicle that has a lot of room for people and storage in the back, but it also allows us to put the rack up on top. So we're pretty narrowed in what we can choose from. All right, very nice. So not one on my car, but that's okay. All right, now we're in the mobile mesonet, and Sean, I'm not gonna lie, this is very cool. Tell us what's going on, and give us a give us a 411, if you will. So right now we have the mobile mesonet program that's in display up here, and it's all controlled by this wireless keyboard that we have here. It's got a nice little trackball on it, so we can go around and we can look at different things. Up here on the top, we've got temperature, dew point. You can look at wind speed, wind direction, pressure, relative humidity theta E for those people that are interested in that kind of stuff, even navigational stuff. So we've pretty much got all the information that's coming down from the rack up aloft and it's all put into this program. We drive a lot of things and you can all look at it in real time. So you can kind of figure out, you know, when you're driving through a storm, what, what are you seeing? What kind of variables are you measuring? You know, have you driven through that outflow boundary yet? That kind of stuff. So we'll use all this program to kind of examine where we're at in the storm and kind of get a real-time look at the data as we're collecting it so you kind of have an idea of what to look for later on when you're doing post-processing and that kind of stuff. So these mobile mesonet vehicles are actually only one piece of the puzzle. Um, all this data that comes in off these things needs to be relayed back to the command center so that the people that are in charge of the project can make all the decisions. So all that data actually gets wired back to the big command center that's back there. Let's go check that out. All right, here we are at this white ambulance looking mobile. Tell us more about this. It actually was an ambulance at one point. Uh, it's modeled pretty much after the same thing and we gutted it out, kind of replaced it with our own stuff. We took out all the you know, bad benches that you associate with being hurt and put in some lazy boy recliners, make things nice and comfortable. Uh, the nice thing about it is it's got a lot of space. Put all kinds of computer equipment in there, communications equipment, that kind of stuff. So we can really jam a whole bunch of stuff in there. You can also carry around things like helium tanks in the oxygen storage places so that we can do a lot of mobile ballooning experiments and things like that using this vehicle. So it's a pretty versatile vehicle, fit a lot of people in it, a lot of equipment in it. We tend to use it as kind of a command center, kind of on, on the road type thing, so that major field projects like this project can use this as kind of a base of operations and kind of feed out directions to everybody else that's in the project. All right, tell us about this junk in the trunk right here in front of us. 
this is one of our radar trucks, and they've actually been working really hard to upgrade this to a dual polar metric radar, which basically means it sends out two different signals, one vertical, one horizontal. Um, it works just like a normal radar does, except the difference is it can actually see what type of precip you're looking at, rain versus hail, snow, that kind of thing, because you can get a more, like a more complete picture of the actual raindrop instead of just one cross section through it. So they've been working really hard to upgrade this. We have a couple of more outside, along with all the other vehicles that we got in this project, which is a considerable amount. So. All right, we've taken a walk to the wet side of life outside, and look at all these cars that we have. We've got big, we've got little, we've got blue, we've got silver. And Sean's going to tell us what's in this pimped out ride right here, right now. Give us a little, little, little 411, as I like to say. So this is one of our mobile sounding trucks. It's got three helium tanks in the back, and they'll be using those to actually launch sounding balloons out in the field. Um, we can track up to four different balloons at a time. So they'll drive to a particular part of the storm, fill a balloon up, put the sonde on it, launch it, drive off, go do it again 30 minutes later and launch another one. And the idea is to kind of get a vertical profile of the storm in different spots. So we've actually got quite a bit of equipment crammed in here. Um, we've got all the nice big weird looking antennas up on top that people are probably going to think we're doing something really weird because that one in the back looks rather odd. But that allows us to communicate with the balloons as they're going up in the air um, while we're driving down the road and things like that. So we get all of our data back real time. Uh, that's the only way we get the data. So we have to maintain line of sight contact with the balloons. But there's a lot of equipment that goes on the inside here. So I'm going to open up this back door. Let's take a look at this, this baby. And as you can see, we completely removed one of the back seats and shoved a whole bunch of equipment in there. And it's all kind of contained in this nice little box that we've strapped down using a lot of the, uh, the seat bolts that were there and a lot of the frame and stuff like that. The main thing is we didn't drill any holes in this truck to get all this stuff down. We had to do it all without ruining the car. So. All right, very nice. Let's take, let's take a look at another car in this, in this nice little arena. I like it, I like it. All right, here we are at another another vehicle, and um, Sean, tell us what's going on. Uh, this car is actually one of the scouts that will be used for the radar trucks. The radar trucks need somebody to kind of go out ahead of them and find a good spot to set up. You can't drive those things over real small bridges, muddy roads, that kind of thing. So they send out these vans to get stuff for them, and they needed a lot of stuff in this. They wanted two laptops, a writing desk, you know, all kinds of internet equipment, that kind of stuff. So I actually completely removed the front seat and put the computer desk. We kind of handmade it. Some of the parts are bought, some of the parts I just kind of made up as we went along. And basically built a desk in place of the front seat so that the navigator can sit in the back seat here and kind of decide where's the best place to put this radar truck. And they'll go out and do all the scouting of the locations for the radar truck. All right, that's my kind of navigator. It has its own desk and everything. All right, well, I hope you all learned something. I know I sure did. And when you see these trucks out on the road, you'll know exactly what's going on and, and what they'll be using for, and it's going to be hard to miss them with all the gadgets on top. Thanks again, and until next time, stay classy.